Up until now, we were only taking PS Vita and putting it on a bigger screen, be it a tablet or a TV. Not this time though. This time, we are giving it mini treatment and we are shrinking it down. How far down? Down to about, I would say, three and a half inches of screen real estate. Is this a good idea? That's up for a debate. Is this gonna make a solid video for you to watch? That's for sure. Besides other things, you're gonna find out if you can play Fallout on this tiny screen and what to do if you encounter natural disaster. So, let's get cracking. When I get a product in for a review, usually I can tell fairly quickly whether or not I like it. And as soon as I grabbed this product, I liked it. Why? Because it's doing something different. It's going small and thick instead of big and thin. It is called Tang Mini by Unihertz and it is a mini rugged phone. You don't hear these three words together that often. In fact, I'm hearing it first time. It has 4.3 inch LCD screen, Helio G99 Octa-core CPU, 12 gigs of RAM and they surprisingly haven't forgotten about micro SD slot and headphone jack. Thumbs up for that. Last time I was checking this bad boy and I couldn't imagine actually using it and taking it somewhere with me. With this device, <laughs> I can imagine that. It's easily pocketable and looks like it can be used even by human beings. It is built really tough, shockproof, waterproof, all the good stuff, plus it has some cool extra features like rangefinder that can be used for measuring distance of up to 40 meters or extra bright camping light that can be used when paired with device's speakers as a party brainwash. Also, huge thanks to company for sending it over. This is the test of the camera. They claim it is 100 megapixels, but we all know it's not about megapixels, but about the quality of the sensor. And the sensor quality mm, is not the best, of course. And also it has some issues with focus. Geekbench 6 CPU and GPU scores were almost identical to the Blackview Tab 18 that has the same chipset inside, Helio G99. This is not a bad chip, it can pull off solid emulation or two. I'm sure you're keen to see some PS Vita emulation, so here it goes. I said it has 4.3 inch screen, but with tall aspect ratio, so if you play 16x9 PS Vita games, you got black bars at the sides. Which is handy if you wanna play with touch controls. I haven't used them for a while, so let's see how many games I can play with touch controls only. I've never been good at wipeouts, and now I'm even less good. But the performance is pretty good. Same as with Drive Girls, it was running good, it is a hack and slash, so it's kinda playable even with touch screen only. This time I was able to emulate even Child of Light, FPS was around 17, but no graphical glitches or anything. Asphalt injection, here I was very tempted to play it with controller, but I resisted that urge. It was very hard to drift, because I had to hit the brake, then back gas, and that was very tricky. Dragon's Crown was running solid, no urge in here, but clearly all these games need to be played ideally with physical controls, because as we all know, touch sucks. Uncharted Golden Abyss had some graphical glitches, I couldn't get rid of them no matter what, but FPS was kinda okay. That's about it from Vita emulation using Vita Freaky Android latest version 10. As you can see, even weaker hardware can do a lot, which cannot be really said about Switch emulation using Yuzu on this device. I've tried New Prince of Persia, Lost Crown, it was running slower at 1x resolution, so I've tried to lower it to 0.5, and it was kinda playable, but still not full speed, which really surprised me. Next, Blades of Time, kinda slow with messed up audio, and I couldn't go lower than 1x, cause the game was then broken down and I couldn't see my character, and I guess this would be a case for many games, if you would wanna downscale it. So just be aware. Celeste was running full speed, and this game finally forced me to plug in the controller, cause it was using also the triggers. Left joystick and action buttons are kinda doable even with touch only, but triggers? No, no. 
This phone is really massive, so you cannot plug in any Razer Kishi, but you can pair it with the Bluetooth controller, so that's what I did and I was using my DualShock 4. Dead Cells was not playable. This chip is just too weak for any kind of better game. You're gonna be fine with the least demanding games like Celeste, but something more is a no-go. I was very surprised by the Lost Crown. It made me want to play for longer, but I had to move on to Black and PS2 emulation. Same like on the Blackview Tab 18, I couldn't get it to run at full speed, no matter what setting I changed, there were still some slowdowns. Need for Speed Underground, better, but it still dropped a frame or two every now and again, even at 0.75x of original resolution. One of the hardest to emulate games was running slow as expected, Shadow of Colossus, but Blood Will Tell was running full speed. If I should change anything on this phone that would make me want to buy it, I would change the screen for higher quality OLED panel, cause this one is kinda below my expectations. I would also remove the thickness and ruggedness, I would make it thinner, cause this one is still way too thick. And the last thing I would want is stronger chip, clearly. Then it would be a perfect phone for me. Right now I'm using Galaxy S23. It's on the smaller side, but still way larger than this one. And honestly, I like this size of a display. It's like a breath of fresh air. PSP emulation at 2x, God of War was running solid, as well as Midnight Club LA Remix. GameCube emulation acceptable, Metroid Prime kind of playable, as well as Resident Evil 4 and 13. Native Android games like Call of Duty Mobile are also not gonna be an issue, here I'm playing it on medium. But when you play it with the touch only, the fingers are kind of going in the way, cause the screen is really small. Now I think you want to know if I was able to play Fallout, right? Well, I was able to play it, but was I able to enjoy it? No, not really. The text was tiny and unreadable, and some selection buttons were very hard to press, cause this game was uh, designed to be played on a big monitor, not on a 4.3 inch smartphone. But I'm sure you've been expecting that. I'm sure you're also expecting me to tell you how much does it cost. And if it's a good deal. Right now they're selling it for around 220 British pounds, which is about 280 American dollars. And that's quite a lot in my opinion, especially considering you can buy a pretty good tablet with same chip for cheaper. I'm still comparing it to Blackview Tab 18 because they have the same chip, but the tablet still looks like a far better deal to me. It has way better display and larger, way better speakers, large battery, there is still a slot for SIM card and micro SD, but the headphone is missing, no big deal. The only benefit I see in this mini rugged phone is the wow factor, that it is doing something different, but not really for cheap. If they would put the price down, I think it would make more sense to me, but until now, I don't think it's really worth it. Yes, it has some cool features, like barometer, rangefinder and camping light, but realistically I mean who's gonna use it and how often. Thanks to you for watching, thanks to members and patrons for support, peace out! Psst, you're still here, you're still waiting for the key piece of information what to do in a case of natural disaster. Well, according to this phone, you meant to open this application and turn on these red and blue flashing lights. Then you need to choose the correct warning simulator noise, and that's it. And what's the purpose of doing this? I would also like to know that, cause this clearly doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Ha ha ha!